Were you quite popular at school? Or did you yeah, yeah. I, well, it was a quiet school, boys and girls. Uh, yeah. So they, I was, they were trying to like learn and get over, like you know, like catching on from other players. But, and so it was too difficult for me to try to really take take on the piano. But uh, when I started playing bass, everybody got more excited by that. <laughs> So. Well, I've got to say, interject here because why is a bit of a dark horse? Because I knew Wire nearly th two and a half, three years before somebody sent me a clip, and I know him as a keyboard player. And then a good friend of mine who's a media person, when I told her I was um, starting to get involved with Wire Lindo and play with him and manage him and stuff, she sent me a clip. And the clip was a piece of music called Redemption Song, wow. where you have Bob Marley and Earl Wire Lindo sitting together not too long before Bob's death. Um, untimely death at that. Um, playing in the studio, I think it was RJR, or was it RJR? One of the TV stations there, where they're sitting together with two acoustic guitars, and Bob's singing Redemption Song, and Wire is playing guitar. Now, I'd known the guy three years, and he didn't tell me he played guitar, and I'm his keyboard player. So I had to go, I ran around, and I said, Wire, how come you didn't tell me you played guitar? So he's a very, very modest person when it comes to his abilities, you know. Um, and then I had to say, well, why would Bob Marley? have his keyboard player playing guitar with him on this song called Redemption Song prior to his death when he's got plenty of guitarists. Um, why is his keyboard player? And then, it, as we all know, it's, it's been stated several times to myself through the band and various other persons, but why I was also involved in helping to write that song, compose that song, because he's actually a composer. Yeah. And he's classically and musically trained onto a very high level. So there's a whole story behind that as well. But um, this was the first time I got wind of how talented Wyatt actually is when we were actually asked to do Redemption Song at another gig one day, just the two of us, and I started playing Redemption Song and he said to me, you're doing it wrong, that's not the right chords. <laughs> and I was like, what kind of chords are you talking about? And then he went and he's got very big hands, Why? show them your hands, Why? Huge. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then he's got doing these <laughs> twisted chords and I'm like, uh, that's too hard for me to play, I want to stick to the basic bar chords. But then I realized that he, you know, has these, you know, a lot of musical skills outside yeah. of his keyboard abilities. And because yeah. his hands are so big, he can get quite a... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he's not exactly normal in that <laughs> sense. <laughs> That's what I can't yeah. He's Octave, exceptional. <laughs> a quiet genius, I call him, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why music, then? What, 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 what does music do that drew you to it? Oh, well, um... It kind of um, was a way out of studying, having to, you know, beat the books them all the while and you know, keep up with the standard, you know, the O levels and the, o and the A levels and all yeah. that. So music was like an escape. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't like school? Is that what you're trying to say? Um, I tried to like, well, like, to maintain an identity. I had to like. Catch on as a way of getting over. I would, I would, girls, I, I had a girlfriend who was a prefect. <laughs> you know, so she, 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 she our relationship kind of took off the pressure of like exam pressure and all those things, you know. Yes. So me playing music was a way out of crossing over in the school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what I was. So it's all because of a woman. <laughs> Which isn't a bad uh, reason at all. Uh, well, she was kind of like very good looking, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I found myself hit, like hiding under a shadow or something. Okay. Yeah. Who's this woman? A prefect girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she had you in the yeah. <laughs> they could detain me, <laughs> but no. they didn't detain me so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you about some of the tours that you've been on, like the Rusty Man Vibration tour? What was that? Oh, oh, that? Well, they said um, they want me to come back in the group when over the time when Rusty Man Vibration was being recorded. They, they, they sent from from California and said they want me to come back in. <laughs> I, of course, I was very honoured by that still. And, because I, I was, I was actually doing like African music at the time, 
playing with me, some African guys from Ghana. So Rest My Marriage and Tour um, must have felt that separation. So uh, it touched their hearts. Yeah, sure. It touched them. So it said that for me. Just to interject, there was a period where Wire started working almost like a session musician outside of the Whalers, because he's very jazz as well, he's not just like reggae, his mm. style actually, and I actually personally think the reason Bob had Wire as a keyboard, there's lots of keyboard players in Jamaica, but he has a very particular style, he does some very strange things on that keyboard, and they're not conventional, sometimes we don't quite understand what he's playing, but when you listen back to it after he's played it, it's like, that is not <laughs> regular, <laughs> yes. so, so I think that's why... Um, why he would appeal, I think, to even for many songwriters and creative people, including Bob, who would have recognised that kind of skill, as he did with Bobby Family Man and some of the other guys, who were not the irregular musicians. These guys had some other vibe going on about them. You put them together and you've got the Wailers, basically. Yeah. And that was a very unique band to have, to play or to, to, to have you as, as a backing band, as a songwriter. Bob was a songwriter, fundamentally. But to the sound that come, came out of that band, we're second to none. In fact, I mean, the greatest album of all time, obviously, you know, you're talking creme de la creme of musicians who he must have kind of in his own way sort of picked them guys for a reason. So, um, but yeah, go back to the rest of my vibration. So he went away yeah. for a little bit right, okay. and um, did some other stuff and come back. So it wasn't just like all on one level. Can I just ask you, in that way, the, the, the keyboards, more than any other instrument, really open that up, don't they? It lends itself to the oh, exploration yeah. of the whole universe of music, right? Yeah, yeah, I was working with some other artists and um, he was um, with a guy called Juno Lincoln, a producer from over here. We we're, were doing, we was producing this girl called Sharon Forrester. I forgot her name. And um, so Russell and Vibration was just being put up by Adam. Yeah. And I was on a different label. So um, I, I, I thought, well, they, try, they seem they were trying to like get my attention back into the group. So um, I guess we, we hooked up that way because the rest of my vibration was a very, very big hit album. And, um, yeah, like I was in the studios, busy with the studios. Uh, I think that's when they coordinated the whole thing. It's a trade secret. <laughs> Oh, I'm um, it was um, survival. Yeah. That's when I came back in. Why is that? Because it was kind of educational. They were trying to, yeah, we, we were just not just playing, but we had like a conference, press conferences and stuff like that in New York. Yeah. And um, we were honored to be among them at that time because, um, you know, people didn't know Marley was more than just a singer. Yeah. It was like a, I don't know, I wouldn't know to describe it as a prophet or something more <laughs> like that. Well, we were ahead of time, man. So, um, they... <laughs> well, I kind of was really not so political minded in it. I was <laughs> just, I was in it for the, I don't want to say I was in it for the fame and popularity, but at that time, I was like staying in the background, trying not to overshadow the group. Although I was kind of, you know, I was just like just out of university, kind of. But um, my thing was musicology. I tried to blend African roots with reggae, you know. Yeah. And they, it, it, has, it, it was work that had never been done yet. Yeah. Okay, everyone was playing their still Jamaican style of music, you know. And we just, when, we, when I came back in, they just, we got inspired by, you know, trying to bridge the gap between Africa and Jamaica. So that album did very well in the States. It was on the charts and so. <laughs> yeah. Africa Unite, they call it now. Well, I don't know what else could they have been. Is it a <laughs> 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 
Yeah. I could have been just after making myself famous, but I wasn't. I was very committed to playing with yeah. Mom the way it's good. I didn't really use them for the opportunity, wow. as I looked. Mm. Well, I didn't know very much until um, Bob Sal, I mean, his girl called Yvonne, I was from, there's a girl, uh, a girl I met, um, what's her name, Yvonne something, she was Yvonne, she's, work, she's a writer, journalist, and um, until I heard him speak about something, something to do with the system, Babylon system. Well, <laughs> I should have heard that comment or that idea. Uh, like it woke me up. So, uh, so they're not so easy then. So uh, it is, its concept was more complicated because um, I didn't know anything about the system and all that. <laughs> Babylon system was a heavy, it was heavy to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was his big crossover, I think. I've been a couple of years now, about 10 years now, something. I was 17 now. Yeah, 10 to this time. This concert a lot of times, and then this whole studio musician experience, how did that work? Did you, would you like turn up to work and not know who was playing? Or, mm. I mean, how did that? Well, it's like, it's all about being liked or being preferred. Yeah. Uh, as the many call for your chosen. Yeah. Well, I was kind of at some kind of, well, a challenge, I would say. Uh, the whole thing seemed to, me, it seemed to be like a challenge, trying to cross off with different producers. Yes. It's like the, the producers are competing among themselves, like Cox and Duke Reed, yeah. and, you know. Bevel is all those other artists. Um, until until I went into Cox's studio to do some work, until that development, I guess maybe I would have been underrated more. But um, we're working some songs for Studio One. Well, that was, a, I think, a, yeah. a big achievement. <laughs> They just um, the yeah, they just play the music over overhead. Yeah, like big big studio overhead. You know. They just play and they, I guess they wanted me to feel that way more honored <laughs> yeah. because that's where um, big artists, big musicians came from. The um, studio one band and um, Jackie Mitou and uh, yeah. where all those people we were playing. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, it's like they were showing me that, you know, that's the competition, so I, I was honored, so I did some work. I did with um, Alton. Yeah. Yeah. There was, was, there was some good chats coming out of that. Yes.